Hey there, Cruel Pesora. I'm the sound designer at AVA Music Group, and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of our brand new product, AVA Eminence Trailer Sound Effects. It's our legacy to AVA Instinct. More samples, better interface, new concepts, and uh, hopefully better mixes. So once you've downloaded the files, what you can do is go into contact, right click, create a folder in quick load and simply drag the NKIs. Now this library is compatible with contact 5.8.1. It requires the full contact version and note that if you don't have that, you still have access to all the samples as WAV files. So I personally use a lot of WAV files but this is the first engine I've really designed from the bottom with my collaborators, Clément Ducas. So this is actually something that I would enjoy using. So enough of me talking and let's dive into the instruments. So you can see the NKI you have loaded and then within the NKI you have a menu with all the different brams available. you can play the sounds a bit higher. Now if you play very high, obviously it sounds a bit weird, but I didn't want to limit the uh, sound design possibilities. So think about it as the effective range C2 to C3 and then everything above that is more open to crazy experiments, and you can add, you know, a bit of reverb. Filter. Distort it. Gain stage it a little bit. Make it a bit brighter. Maybe get rid of some of the delay. Yeah, that's a pretty cool sound to me that was not at all intended. I was just completely improvised, but it goes to show you how easy it is to design sounds in this interface. Now let's go back to some other presets. Now all these effects are still on, so you can turn them off like this, or you can load some little snapshots here, save your own, etc. I think one of my favorite sounds is tower defense. You can do it in octaves too. And you can also sculpt it to something a bit more organic, less uh, guitar sounding. So let's do a bit of release. Make it more natural, more organic. Add a bit of reverb. The cool thing you can do is assign the mod wheel to low pass. And start bending sounds a little bit, make it super trailer. Or bend it down. Really, really cool sounds to use. All right, now let's move to the drone departments. I always look for sounds that have a lot of evolution. Here I have something a bit more textural that evolves, very bass heavy. Great to finish a song or for an introduction, put a transient in the middle, great transition sound. That's a more safe and generic background sound, but has still a very dark, scary mood due to the dissonance. Fake violin is a synthesizer that sounds like a violin. Similar to house music where the last chorus will have this little drone constant 
violin pitch to just add, fill a bit of a frequency in a production. It's kind of a bread and butter type sound. Not very unique, but has a very precise function in a mix. Here's something kind of opposite. This is less about function, but more about introduction, envelope, listener's attention, trying to create something to catch the audience at the beginning of a track. Some moving textures. I always like scoring a, a short film or a cue with um, drones that allow me to just hit one note and fill two minutes of, of a scene without doing any work because the sound has so much movement, so much interest over time. Oh, I just had fun here remaking the Overwatch atmosphere in the menu. If you listen to it after the play of the game and you see all your statistics, there's this very mature and moody vibe that I love. Now the attack might be a little bit aggressive here, so you can do is simply change the start point or loosen the attack by a few uh, milliseconds. And if you're bending stuff, the reverb space is destroyed by the bend because it breaks the illusion of a space. Obviously, when you bend something, <laughs> the room size doesn't change as you bend an instrument. It's uh, physics. So to compensate for that, I recommend adding a reverb, a reverb on top. This is Yadin Verdu, great clarinet player. Now let's switch to drum loops. So here we have pretty thin sounding yet compressed drums, great for intros. These drums were used in my track uh, Pathfinder with Chroma. This one has a sub that is tuned at F sharp. Pretty punchy drums here. Then we have some tiki takas. I would say these are similar to clocks or hi hat loops, but obviously not using hi hats because that's a bit boring and everyone does that. And as you listen to them, I want you to pay attention to all the different frequencies that they fill. Uh, some are centered, some are wide, some are tonal, some are more noisy, some have more of a flam effect, some have a closer space, some are more reverberated. And all that is to convey different uh, stage positioning in the mix. So when you mix them all together, they all have their space. And something that I accidentally <laughs> discovered recently is is if you hit all the all the notes on the keyboard, you just get a great drum loop. So hopefully this is a good testament of how well these drums are mixed. I spent ages mixing them, but I'm also testing them in my own tracks and then rendering those to make sure that they work in different contexts. Now here's the top secret, <laughs> I shouldn't say top secret, but probably the most wanted instrument in the library, because I think most people can find good drum loops, but a lot of people are struggling to find good toms. So here I recorded a bunch of loops. So these took me about two years to get right. I've been obsessed with uh, Blake Robinson, aka Blakus, trying to figure out great sounding toms a la Junkie Excel, Zvi, Mick Gordon. As far as the mapping, you have drums on one side and you can see that there's a missing note in the middle. That's just an indicator that the patch repeats to the right in triplets. 
So you can do little fills like Very useful to quickly make good drum fills on the spot and everything's tempo synced so you can go This or a bit slower So anyway, I'm, I'm really proud of these drums. I think in the future I'm gonna release them with a proper drum interface with multiple mic positions and more complex ADSR. But if this drum sound interests you, let me know in the comments and give us ideas of what we can do for our next drum engine that will be specialized on those type of trailer drums. That was a bit of a convoluted sentence, my apologies. Now let's go to hits, whooshes, Risers, downers. Now, here there's a bunch of stuff. This patch is essentially everything that is not a loop and atonal. I wouldn't say atonal, I would say without a pitch so that you can use in any key. So here all the hits are mapped on the keyboard. As you can tell, very clean and textural hits. And I tried to here shorten the tails, make the subs a bit tighter. So the trailer mix usually has a much cleaner sound if you compare that to cine mix. The tails are much longer. So it's really up to you. If you're mixing a trailer with a lot of dense material, go for the trailer mix. If you're going for something a bit more cinematic with a lot of reverb, a lot of size, I would use the cine mix. Now something else I want to talk about is obviously this knob in the middle. You're wondering what does it do? So I spent some time trying to figure out what is the typical processing I do to my hits. And it's quite subtle, but it's still quite a difference in a mix. This is more natural sounding. This has that trailer sound, this, this beef, this uh, kind of ear candy, hi-fi sound, a bit too compressed. Now, the only problem you might encounter is that the tail the sub kind of gets back up. So what you want to do is shorten the release. Now you can add a bit of release to avoid some of the clicks. Yeah, this sounds good to me. Very useful tool to quickly get a sound to sound uh, hyper-processed. Now moving on to the drum kit. Now you've heard some of these sounds in the drum loops. Pretty standard, but very well mixed sounds. I paid close attention to getting the room. Always a bit of reverb makes a very produced difference in a mix. Sounds a bit drier. This one has more tail. Oh, this this one is um, a remake of Junkie XL Come Together. The track for Justice League had a monstrous kick drum. The AVA fans will recognize that snare is in Prism, and it's also in the trailer I did for Shazam, the Humble Remix. Has slightly more room and a little different tonal balance. Anyway, I'm rambling a lot, so let's move on. Whoosh hits. I mean, these are your bread and butter whoosh hits. Very heavy, very punchy. I try to mix them differently so they don't all sound the same. Some will work better in a certain context than others. Like this one has quite a lot of, I guess, 100 hertz and above. That one's much lighter in that region. The transient is much softer. You can tell that I also gave them noise. So, <laughs> no noise, I give them names. The noise ones are the ones that people tend to love. I prefer more defined, less noisy sounds. Yeah, I'd say stuff like that. 
that stuff is usually my favorite. Yeah, I don't like much noise. Punchy hits. That one is more textural, you can feel something watery about it. Granted, not easy to use in music, but for trailer editors, pretty cool uh, sound trick to get the audience pay more attention to a certain sound. Moving on to rolls. Really good to layer with other hits. Talking about layering, a good trick is to layer your rolls with a boom on the climax of the roll. Again, you'll see some samples that have a bit more of an attack. In some cases, I like to have my booms to have a pre-transient. It makes it a bit more interesting. You can of course remove that by simply changing the start point. Lower is a bit better. Quite some possibilities here. Again, I tried to put some names that are helpful to understand how the sounds are supposed to be mixed in context. So when they're a bit dense, I wouldn't use them in a dense arrangement. Clean is a bit easier to use. Yeah, this one is one of my favorites. That one has no reverb. Downers. So downer hits are downers that have a more complicated transient. Just having a little extra hit in front of it, then these don't. Yeah, a little bit cleaner. Moving on to risers. Listening a lot to Bring Me to Horizon, hence the name. So again, I know a lot of you have a lot of risers already, so I always try to find new ideas to have new textures that people haven't used but are still very functional. So Rocket Launch has this very distorted kind of rocket exhaustion going on at the beginning. It's kind of in the low end. Distorted low end that's slowly rising. Yeah, getting... Good risers is always uh, very difficult because they're the longest samples to produce just by their sheer duration. And not being bored by just putting synthesizers that slowly rise with different rates. Finding the good textures is a bit more mechanical. I don't know why mech activated sounds like I was in my Overwatch diva phase. Power upgrade. I like how the rate of that one goes. It's a bit more like a drill. So that was a bit of risers. Let's go to a new patch. So what do we have? Ooh, pulses. So you can play a pulse in different keys. It's tempo synced. Go higher. Maybe a bit of free on that would help. Okay. Sorry guys, I just realized I forgot to mention something in the hit department over here. 
you have this reverb here with a bunch of spaces. Now, most of you are going to assume that the spaces are pretty standard halls, but I know reverb in contact isn't that uh, great for mixing and you all have amazing reverbs like, uh, I don't know, Valhalla, Pro R and all that great stuff. So what I tried to do is make IRs of crazy stuff that no one has. And let me explain a few things about that. So Sizzle, for instance, is just a high end. It's almost like if you were layering a cymbal on a hip. Or sometimes you can use it as a way to extend the low end. So a lot of the trailer mixes are a bit short in the low end to keep it punchy and great in the mix, but you can actually re-add a low-end signal by using the subtail one. So without, with subtail. Super useful stuff to do sound design. Another one I like is mids only. Now that sounds a bit thin, but in the context of a mix, let's say with uh, metal hits, kind of want to use that. Another one I like is the Titan wide. This one is strangely wide. Let me find something that's a bit centered. Actually, I can center something. So I'm making the signal mono and then making it wider afterwards. Really cool tricks. And then Lego drums, that's just the uh, IR I used on my drums for the Lego trailer. All right, so uh, that said, let me go back to where I was. I was in pulses. All right, so pulses, let's see. Everything is tempo mapped. Change the tempo here. Obviously you have the original key in the sample here so that can help you to understand how it works. As a rule of thumb, if you go higher, it always sounds good. If you go really slow, you can start to hear the silence between every transient. But sometimes you kind of want that, it opens up the mix a little bit. One of my favorite sounds inspired by Zwei. I don't know why, but that always works in a track, I think it's just because the distorted yet filtered sound means that all the harmonics are here, but just at the right place and very controlled. Just a lot of EQ on this, a lot of cabinets removing unwanted frequencies. Plus the bend makes it very sonically recognizable. <laughs> Similar sound. Now here, to be honest, I'm not crazy about the stretching algorithm in contact. Always recommend taking those sounds and warping them yourself in the track with the audio samples. All the, all the audio wave files are available to you. I didn't lock them, bake them in the engine. But sometimes you also want that disgusting contact stretch sound. So I'm curious how that would sound really slow. No, it's not too bad. It's kind of cool, actually. Maybe if I start distorting stuff. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you 
can really do whatever you want. Sometimes degradation is the best trick for a production. I mean, everything we love is degraded, you know, vinyl, tape, all that stuff, all these distortion pedals that completely butcher the signal. I think I mentioned this, but you can just click here and save this. I'm going to call that KP uh, Stretch. And then whenever you need it, you can just turn it back. I'm going to reset all this by hitting Command. One of my favorite sounds, I was looking for a way to add energy behind a very clean bass line. guitar part from one of my trailer tracks called Hellraiser. Let's add a bit of tempo here. Some cool loops. Actually, you can see that it's an F minor, so I'm going to try this. Again, what I'm always trying to do is find different textures. One time you'll hear something very saw sounding, very incisive, and then something a bit more fog-like. <laughs> By fog, I mean this, this type of sound, kind of blurred. I really, really love these sounds. Yeah, here's something more incisive. These two sounds are quite similar, but one is stretched using a time machine and one is stretched using beats, so it's a good way to hear the difference in the high end. As opposed to this. So what Beat Machine does is that it chops the sample into one shots, and if ever you wanted to change this, you can simply Go into the engine, do this, and then find whatever sample you like. And at the bottom here, you have Time Machine Pro or Beat Machine. And I already calibrated everything so it sounds to my taste, but if ever you wanted to change, you could do that. Personally, I always prefer Beat Machine because you can get some really cool percussive stuff in the high end. You can almost make your own tiki takas from bass loops. Let's examine the last patch, the signature sounds. Very cool signature sounds. Just, uh, I love all this movement and weird harmonics and 
rattling, all that type of stuff. So yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm playing this an octave lower than it's meant to be. Very cool sound. I don't know how to describe this, but I've always been obsessed with those sounds. I call them crunchy, rattling. Really love this sound, a lot of soul in it, I almost feel like it's alive. In conclusion, I'm wrapping up this rather long walkthrough that was supposed to be less than 10 minutes. That didn't go well. But hopefully you got to see that no sound is a filler in this library. I mixed everything to the best of my abilities. I tried to think about functionality, constantly testing sounds against other productions to see how well they fit. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.